what is the Spirit of the Lord saying to the church right now? Well, I'm grateful He raises up prophets who give us an awareness of the times and seasons we are in, and I believe it is time for revival and awakening. Join us today as we hear powerful prophetic words and dreams that let you know what time it is in the Spirit. Welcome to The Resting Place, a place where you will experience the supernatural presence and power of God both in and upon you where you will meet face to face with the Holy Spirit in a tangible way, and where you will encounter signs, wonders, and miracles. Join Larry Sparks, prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image today, as together we enter into The Resting Place. Well, welcome to The Resting Place. I am your host, Larry Sparks, and this program is all about creating a resting place in your life for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. I have my friend and guest here today, Jane Hammond. And Jane, I got to ask you this question, a little bit of your origin story, because listen, people are probably familiar with you, with Bill Hammond, Christian International, and how you all have collectively pioneered Mm -hmm. the prophetic movement. Mm -hmm. But I got to ask you, how did you recognize that you were a prophet? How did you step into that identity? I'm I'm curious. (laughs) Wow. That's well, you know, one. I wasn't raised in a um, in a church, and uh, I didn't really know much about the the concepts of the Holy Spirit or hearing from the voice of God. Mm. But when I was about five years old, a little boy in my neighborhood passed away unexpectedly. He was a little boy that I played with. And back in the 60s, and I know I'm dating myself when I say that, but uh, back in the 60s, there was a, a television program called The Flying Nun with Sally Field. Yep. And it was about this nun that would get herself in all kinds of trouble. And then usually she would go in and get down on her knees and fold her hands and pray and look up to heaven. And God would help her solve her problems. Well, at five years old, I, I, I followed my mentor, Sally Field. <laughs> I went into my room, got down on my knees, folded my hands, looked up and prayed to God for comfort. I didn't even know who he was. And the Holy Spirit came down in my room and wrapped himself around me. Mm. And you know, it felt so good. I just kept coming back for more. So from that point forward, every single night, I would get on my knees and I would cry out to the Lord and God would just wrap himself around me. I didn't get saved till I was 14, but by then I had already spent hours and hours and hours in the presence of the Lord and reading the word and memorizing scripture. Um, so when I got saved at 14 and then I got filled with the Holy Spirit at 16, um, it was not a shock to me when at 16 years old, God audibly spoke to me wow. and told me about my calling as a prophet, my calling to the nations and my calling to bring his word. So yeah, uh, yeah. it's been an amazing, incredible journey. And then of course, God, uh, uh, I married into the Hammond family yes. and we've had a passion to teach people to hear the voice of God because one word from God can actually change anything. Yep. Well, I love, cause that's the assignment of the prophet in what we call the fivefold ministry. Sometimes yes. people think a prophet's job is to hear God so you don't have to. But I love you guys totally represent, I believe the assignment and the call of the office of the prophet is yes, you get words. Obviously we're gonna talk about those, but you train everyday believers on how to hear the voice of God and to prophesy. That's right, that's right, because everybody can prophesy and everybody should hear Mm. the voice of God. Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. And so this isn't a sideline issue. This is actually the main issue Mm. is that we need to hear from the heart of God and then we're able to actually do our life. We're able to do the assignments that God gives to us. Yes. And I think that that many times in ministry, we get very focused on doing the work. But in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, it says that God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. Yes for the work of the ministry. And so a lot of times we think, well, I'm an evangelist. My job is to win souls. Yes, that's true. But your job really is to equip the saints so that the saints can win souls. As a prophet, it's my job to hear from God, to minister to people. But then another dimension of that is also to equip people to do what I do, to hear the voice of God and to change their world out of that revelation. And I would say though, that is really a sign of what we'd call the last days outpouring. We read about it in Joel 2 and of course Acts 2, that in the last days, which we've really been in since the day of Pentecost, one of the wonderful signs and affirmations that we are in that time of outpouring is your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And it is no longer just a 
arbitrary person here or a random person there. I mean, in the Old Testament, it was the few and the far between who could operate in that. Right. But now it's the sons and daughters. It's every believer. So I'm, I'm grateful for the heritage and the legacy you all have at Christian International for equipping us on how to hear God's voice and to say what he is saying. But that said, I do want to I want to talk to Jane, the prophet right now in terms of somebody who's recognizing the times and seasons that we're living in. Yes. And I know, I mean, not to date the program, but I think it's relevant. 2020 was <laughs> a very unexpected year and yes. season for many believers. But in the middle of all the chaos and the crisis, we'll go more into this in the second segment. What do you see God doing right now? You know, I think that God is stirring his people up and making us ready for this last day's revival, yeah. this last day's great awakening. I believe that we're in the beginning stages of the third great awakening. Mm. We've had a couple of great awakenings previous to this time that actually were preceded by great darkness. Yeah. I yeah. mean, these were times that were the, the divided nation, um, evil seemed to be on the rise, churches seemed to, to lose their zeal, mm -hmm. all kinds of things were shaking. I believe that we're in a similar season of shaking right now, but I heard the Lord say, the shaking is actually gonna be your making, wow. not your breaking. And so I believe that as we're in this season of time, God is actually stirring us up and he's shaking us to awaken us for the purposes of God. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago in, in 2019, I, I actually heard the Lord say that he wants to bring his church out of survival into revival. Well, as a prophet, many times we we hear something before it happens. And, and really what 2020 did is it caused the church in many respects to kind of get stuck in a survival mentality. And I really believe that the Lord is saying that he's waking his people up now to get us out of survival into a revival awakening mentality because this is gonna be our greatest hour. Almost every prophetic voice says that as we came out of the COVID-19 lockdown on a global scale, we were actually going to see the greatest revivals, the mm. greatest awakenings. And I love what Charles Finney says about awakenings. He says, a revival changes the heart of a man, but an awakening changes the heart of a nation. Yeah. And I believe it's very important for us to shift out of that survival mentality. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that the Lord talked to me about is prodigals and that the prodigals are coming home. And of course, if you're, if you're out there, you know that um, some of you out there might have prodigal children, you might have prodigal nieces and nephews, and you've been crying out for them to come back to Jesus. But that's one aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. The Lord said that there's a lot of people that are prodigal from his presence. Wow and prodigal from his purpose because they got stuck in survival. Mm. And so they, they might go to church on Sunday, but still be prodigal yeah. from his presence. They're not seeking the presence of the Lord in their lives. And so I really believe it's a challenge to the church to, to, sh to be shaken and awakened during this season because God wants to bring in first a harvest of harvesters. Wow, wow. That are ready to actually reap this great harvest that yeah. God is bringing forth. Well, in the next segment, I want you to share some of the prophetic words and dreams you've had that point to this time that we're entering in. But I, I do want to let people know who are watching right now, as you were talking about the shaking and how it's actually making us, mm -hmm. I feel like the Lord is saying to you, when you feel tempted to be discouraged and disappointed by reading through the news feeds, which we are bombarded with every day and it's a lot of bad news. The Lord says, I want you to learn how to leverage the darkness. Mm. When you see how dark it is right now, recognize that that is the opportunity for you, for me to arise because in Isaiah 60, we see darkness and deep darkness covering the earth. We see that right now, but guess what that means? It's an invitation for you and I to have superior glory coming out of us and resting upon us. So when we come back, prophetic words and dreams that tell us what time is it right now in the spirit. Don't go away. Larry Sparks is a prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image. He travels worldwide, equipping everyday believers to encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday lives, translating God's supernatural power to the spheres of influence they have been called to. Larry is driven by a vision to see the earth filled with God's glory. This will happen only as every person, touched by the power of God, 
learns how to become a resting place for the Holy Spirit and releases His power, prophetic strategy, and presence into education, government, media, arts and entertainment, business, family, and the church. As Larry hosts meetings and seminars, the presence of God moves with great power to renew believers, revive the lost, and send forth reformers to change the world. Check out his website for more information. Welcome back to The Resting Place. Larry Sparks here with my guest, Prophet Jane Hammond. And I say that because I believe prophets are a gift to the body of Christ. We were just talking about that in the first segment. And one of the assignments of the prophet, I believe, is to let us know what times and seasons are we living in. Dutch Sheets, a mutual friend, he says this, it's such a simple statement, but it's so good. He says, when we know what time it is, we know what to do. And I think that's one of the key things about prophetic words and dreams you've received. They let us know what time it is and how we should mobilize. So I want you to share some of the words or dreams you've received that really point to this hour we're living in right now. At the beginning of 2020, Larry, I actually had a vision from Jesus and I saw Jesus walk up to me and I was standing shoulder to shoulder with believers as far as I could see on, on each side. And he put a white stone in my hand and he closed my hand over it and he looked at me in the eye and he just nodded his head like, I've got this. And of course, the white stone comes out of Revelations chapter 2, verse 17, when it says, to him who overcomes, I will give you a white stone. I'll give you manna from heaven, and I'll give you a white stone. And that white stone was the white stone of the overcomer. And at, at the time that he gave it to me, I was like, yes, we're overcomers. This is awesome. Jesus is commending us. I didn't realize that what that actually was, was a prophecy. Jesus was prophesying, mm -hmm. saying, you're getting ready to face some things in this next season of time, but I want you to know I've given you a white stone. You're an overcomer. You can overcome because I've overcome. And of course, a, a lot of people didn't necessarily see what was coming with the whole worldwide lockdown that came with uh, the, the COVID-19 virus. But I wanna just tell you, I had a dream when I was ministering in Korea in 2019. And in this dream, I was battling with a dragon. And of course, the whole Far East, you know, has a, a dragon as a religious figure, mm. you know. But I was battling with a seven-headed dragon that you actually see in the, in the book of Revelation. And I, I had a sword in my hand and I had the whole army of prayer warriors of Korea at my back fighting this dragon. And as they prayed, I, I was able to swing the sword and take the head, one head off the dragon. And then we moved on to the second head. But when this happened, it was like a, the, the first head of the dragon grew back. So it felt like, oh my gosh, this is a hopeless battle. But when that happened, it seemed like something happened in the earth in my dream in 2019 that caused the entire global church community to focus on this dragon. And when the whole global church started praying, I saw the hand of the Lord come out of heaven with a golden sword and he just went chuk, 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 and just took the head, all seven heads off that dragon. And then just for good measure, the Lord took a lance and drove it into the heart of that dragon. Mm. And when he pulled the lance out, a billion soul harvest poured out of the heart of the dragon. And I believe that the billion soul harvest coming out of the Far East is also going to be seen by a billion soul harvest coming out of the West and a billion soul harvest coming out of Africa. Why in the world would God settle for just one billion souls when there's seven or eight billion people on the planet? Yeah. I believe we're coming into one of the greatest seasons of awakening that we've ever seen. But I also believe the church must learn how to contend for this awakening and how to understand and that there's a fight at hand. I gotta ask you this question because one of the things that Paul encourages Timothy to do is to wage the good warfare right. using prophetic words. And I've seen so many believers, they will hear a prophetic word or dream or vision like what you just shared, or they'll get a word and they'll just think, oh, that's fantastic. It's just gonna happen. I can sit on my couch, eat potato chips and donuts, and it'll just manifest. But there's a real invitation when we get a prophetic word like that for us to do something. I mean, how would you tell people just the words you've just mm -hmm. given us? What would you 
you tell the person watching at home? How, how do we steward that? What do we do with it? Well, I think first of all, we have to we have to understand that whenever God speaks to us, He is giving us a weapon of war, as yeah. you said. He's empowering us to be able to. Uh, take on the things that are in the spirit realm that would like to oppose, um, in this case, revival or awakening. And I think that really when you look in the word, you actually see the word talk about um, uh, Rahab, who was a dragon figure in Egypt, and he was called the God of chaos and destruction. Mm. And so I really think that that's what I was seeing in that word. And so I think that when you understand that and you're able to identify any place that chaos is actually an operation in your life and contend and stand against it, pray against it, you actually see the superiority of the Holy Spirit coming in and breaking down every stronghold so that we can actually advance the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, last August, I was praying uh, before our, our Sunday morning service, and I heard the Lord say three things. He said, number one, he said, chaos is going to increase in mm. this next season. I said, God, people are not going to get excited about that word. <laughs> uh, but he said, chaos is actually going to increase during this season. It's part of the shaking. Joel chapter three says, the Lord will roar out of Zion. He's going to shake the heavens and the earth, but the Lord is going to be a shelter for his people, a hope for his people, a strength for his people. And so I heard the Lord say, first of all, chaos was going to increase. But then number two, he said, then I will use that chaos to actually strip away all the corruption and all the confusion and the things that have been being done in darkness. The Lord says the chaos is actually gonna strip those things away and I'll bring you into a season of great unveiling, mm -hmm. especially in the United States of America, but really on a global scale. And, but then the third thing that the Lord said was he said, but the God of peace is rising. Mm. The God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. And of course, this comes from Romans 16, 20, that says, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. Yeah. And I believe that we have to understand that when God calls us, calls us to contend, he's not calling us to lose. Yep. He's calling us into a new season of contending and victory. And I thought about Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, that actually pulls that concept of Prince uh, of the God of peace into, into the, the manifestation of who Jesus is, yes. is that he was called the Prince of peace. And in Hebrew, that is the phrase, Sar Shalom. We all know Shalom, yeah. but Sar actually is the word for prince. And it doesn't mean just one that wears a crown and, and a royal robe. That word actually literally means one who wrestles, one who wars, mm. one who governs, and one who rules. And I believe that Jesus is rising, that the, that the Lord is rising in this season as a, a mighty God that wants to fight for us. Yes. And then what's so interesting is the word shalom, we all know means peace and prosperity and tranquility, but the Hebrew scholars actually say that when you look at the four letters that comprise the word shalom and the word picture that's associated with it, it literally means in, in the Hebrew understanding, peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. Wow, wow. And I believe that's the church's assignment right now is to destroy the authority of chaos over our cities, over our nations, to break the way open for the King of glory to come in yeah. and to begin to see massive awakening come to our land. Well, I want to talk more about that in our third segment. We've got maybe 50 seconds left. Could you pray for the folks who are watching? I actually feel like the Lord wants to manifest himself as yes. that God of peace. Amen. Right now, whatever you're facing, I'm telling you, yeah. the God of peace is rising on your behalf. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that the anointing and the authority of Jesus Christ is rising to break every stronghold of chaos, every stronghold of confusion. Father, you're setting people's lives free free right now, Father God. You're instilling peace within their hearts, God, where they've been shaken by fear, shaken by distress, Lord. We just decree right now the shalom of God yes. that is destroying the plans of darkness so that revival can come in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be right back and we're going to talk about how you can use your voice to usher in revival. Stay tuned. Since 1983, Destiny Image has had a clear mandate, publish the prophets. Over the years, the team at Destiny has identified and published some of the most cutting edge and pioneering supernatural books of the generation, launching key leaders into visibility and helping bring the people of God into agreement with heaven's prophetic timeline. Every month, 
Destiny Image releases powerful new books that help believers understand and walk in the fullness of their prophetic destiny to be supernaturally conformed into the image of Jesus. Visit norimediagroup.com to learn about releases from Destiny Image and Harrison House Publishers. And visit destinyimage.tv for thousands of hours of on-demand video training and equipping on how to live a supernatural life. Welcome back to The Resting Place. Larry Sparks here. And again, the show is all about creating a resting place for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. But I want to let you know that your words and what comes out of your mouth can be a resting place for the power of God. Jane Hammond, I want to talk about how we can go to war using the prophetic words that the Lord has given us, because sometimes people misunderstand the prophetic. They get a word either for themselves or they hear one about the nation and they think, oh, that's great. It's just going to happen. But we have a part to play. I believe when we get a word, we need to declare what God has spoken to us. And you have taught extensively on this. Why is it, why is it important for us to declare what God speaks to us? You know, it actually tells us, of course, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I think that a lot of people have heard that scripture, but they don't actually recognize that God has actually given us a capacity to change our world, mm. even through the things that we say. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is uh, Psalms chapter 81, verse 10. And in the Passion Translation, it says it this way, open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it now, mm. you'll see. The words that you speak, so shall it be. And so I think that God is really putting a, 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 an anointing upon the church to understand that when a prophetic word comes, it's not just information, but it brings an impartation for transformation. Yeah. And so what we have to understand is, God, what is it that you want me to then begin to say out of what I've just heard you say to me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, in Job chapter 22, verse 28, it says, you shall de declare a thing yeah. and it shall be established for you. So light will shine on your way. We need light to shine in our cities. We need light to shine in our nation. And we need to not curse our nation. Yes. We need to quit quit cursing our cities, quit cursing our, our nation by talking about how bad things are. We need to start decreeing God's purpose, God's plan, God's awakening coming into our land. Yeah. And it says, well, you shall declare a thing, you shall decree a thing. And that word thing actually means you shall decree the promise, mm. you shall decree the prophecy, and you shall decree the word. Mm. And so what we need to do is that when we're partnering with God, we take the things that he's promised us, we take the things that he's prophetically spoken to us, and we begin to war a warfare by saying what God says into our family, into our finances, over our health. I believe that the, the words that we speak will actually unlock the supernatural realm yeah. for signs, wonders, and miracles as never before. Yep. I was uh, praying for my uh, grandson who had some medical issues issues at one time, and I was just asking the Lord, you know, how do I how do I even pray for him? And uh, and and uh, the Lord gave me Psalms 85 verse eight, and it says this. It says um, it says I will hear what the Lord God will speak. That's the first thing, uh, yeah. and that word here is the word shema. And it's very interesting, Shema means to listen, it means to discern, but it also means, very interestingly, to listen intentionally and to hear intelligently. Mm. See, a lot of people say, oh, I don't hear God. My, my question is always, well, do you take time to listen? Yeah. Okay, because if we listen intentionally, God will always speak to us. Yeah. And, and he said, it says, I will hear what the Lord God will speak for. He will speak peace to his people. There's that word peace yeah. again, yeah. shalom. But what it proceeds is preceded by is the word debar. So the phrase in Hebrew is debar shalom, for he will debar shalom. He will make a decree, that's debar, of the shalom of God. He will make a decree of his authority over chaos. He will make an, a decree of peace, of prosperity, of wholeness, of completion. And when the Lord had me pray that way for my grandson, we actually saw an immediate turnaround, a divine reversal. I think often those prophetic words, I'm thinking even for cities, territories, yes. regions, 
yes, for you personally, for your destiny, for your future, but I think sometimes we just get these prophetic words, we write them down, we catalog them, and we kind of put them away or we put them on the shelf. But I don't believe prophetic words belong on a shelf. No. They are actually our war strategy. Right. And again, you've written this amazing book, Declarations for Breakthrough. I really believe not only does that equip us to have victory and our and breakthrough in our own individual lives, but I keep hearing the phrase, we've got to speak revival. Yes. Speak revival over your city, over your school, over the sphere of influence that God has you in. We need to actually say what God says about those places and people. And I think we get the clues often, what does God say about this thing from the prophetic words, dreams, and visions that he gives us. Absolutely. And so I think that whenever we hear God speak to us, say, we hear God speak in a daily devotion and God highlights a scripture to us, rather than just saying, oh God, that's really good. Yeah. Take what God has just said to you and form it into a decree. Mm. Uh, because I believe that as an army of people start saying what God says, it begins to break down all the misinformation that's floating around in the atmosphere. Because yeah. the enemy is trying to stir a lot of fear in the atmosphere right now. He's trying to stir a lot of hopelessness and despair in the atmosphere. And I believe that that God's anointing is upon the church to open up our mouths and to begin to prophesy. Wow, because it I, doesn't help. I mean, I'm thinking as yeah. you just said that, because what the enemy is stirring and swirling, it doesn't help when we, the church, people yes. of God, doesn't help when we agree with what he's saying. We need to actually offer the counter, which is saying what God is saying. Right, we need to agree with the voice of God. Yes. Instead of agree with whatever mainstream media is feeding us yep. or whatever the despair of the day is feeding us, we need to agree with the voice of God. And the way we do it is not just in our heart. Do you realize you can't even get saved without opening your mouth? That's true. It says you shall confess with, the, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So in every spiritual experience, even in the Old Testament when it says to meditate, Meditate, that word meditate literally means to murmur under your breath. Mm. So God is looking for us, his people, to begin to open up our mouths, to say what he says, to begin to decree the promise, to begin to decree revival, to begin to decree awakening. And as we speak it, I believe all heaven stands at attention. Yeah, well, we, we've got about a minute left, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's hovering on this. Would you pray for the folks at home? I actually believe the Lord is going to remind you of prophetic words he's given you about your life, about your family, about your city, about your wherever that sphere of influence God has given you, I believe Holy Spirit wants to highlight those prophetic words and turn those into a decree. So just pray as you are led. Amen. Well, Lord, I debar shalom. I decree the shalom anointing of the Holy Spirit upon every single person yeah. that's listening right now. And Lord, you're bringing to light and to life the revelation that they've received from your word mm -hmm. and by your spirit so that they can open their mouth and begin to speak it forth because as they do, Lord, all heaven stands at attention, ready to go carry that word out. Angels are being released yeah. to bring prodigals home. And Lord, you're opening up the heavens over cities and nations now because your people are agreeing with you to see revival come. Yeah. And even now, I see people in Scandinavia, in Europe, for those of you who have been praying for your nations, I see those particular territories very specifically. The Lord saying, go back to the prophetic words that I've given concerning the land. Those are your battle strategy. Pray those things because God actually desires those prophetic words to come to pass. And guess what? Your decrees and your declarations participate with God's will breaking into the earth. Thank you for joining us today on The Resting Place. We'll see you next time.